say both points is one to point is are equal. Okay. This is the marginal cost of labor. It's the derivative of W as a function of L times L with respect to L. So this is the labor supply. This is positive. So the marginal cost of labor is above the labor supply. Okay. What is the marginal uh, revenue product of labor? Is your demand for labor? So if you wear the competitive market, I mean, here you are in the competitive market for the output. So that's why this becomes your demand for labor. If, if you solve the profit maximization problem for the individual firm, the first of the condition would be F prime over L is equal W over P. Marginal product of labor equal the real wage. So you can de de derive the demand in nominal terms like this. So this is the demand curve from the firm, demand of labor. This is the supply of labor. This is how much we should observe in the competitive market. This is how much you observe in the monopsony because again the marginal cost of labor exceeds the labor supply. Okay, we are looking at the monopsony is going to pay the same W to all the workers. Like before, the monopoly was selling at the same price and no one thought about it. And this would be your debt result. The difference between what you get from a monopoly and a monopoly. So I don't, I don't think I have many more, much more to add to the truth in this graph. Okay. Which again, so what you have to do here is mirror think with respect to the monopoly. Questions? Monopsonies are there. Eh? I think at any time you I realize that, for example, the athletic, academic market in Singapore is not competitive. So once you come here, you are basically hired by monopsonies. If no questions, we start and we move into crisis solution. So, so far we have looked at the scenario. You want to do an exercise, maybe? Do you have any exercise you want to do, Jordan? No? Anyone has any exercise you want to do? Monopoly and monopsony. find one from an older version of the book. I hope I'm not choosing one in the whole book because I don't remember the one I have. If I choose, you are lucky, eh? one less to do. This question, I think it's from a different edition. So, chances are that even if there is one similar in the homework, it's not exact. So, question.
Ciao. Grenade. Finisce. Ciao. Ho successo. Finisce one. Ti aiuti, tu no. So suppose that United Airlines has a monopoly on the route between Chicago and Omaha, Nebraska. During the winter, the monthly demand of this route is given by P equals A1 minus B times Q. Demand during winter. During the summer, the demand is monthly. Eh? P equals A2 minus B times Q. Oh, this sounds like what happens to the monopolies when there is a shift in the demand. Eh? Sounds like. Maybe one of the classes we go. So this is the monthly. demand during the summer period. What do you think we can say about A2 and A1? Which one is bigger? We are going from Chicago, chi Chicago to Nebraska. Who is going to Nebraska? Okay. A2 bigger than a2 bigger than A1. Uh, maybe it's there are some summer holiday destinations there. MC is the same. Marginal cost is the same. And equal to C less than A1. This one I add, it's not in the book. It's an unstated assumption. Question Which price will be higher? The summer price or the winter time? Or the winter price? Even I guess we did it in class last week. Last week. <laughs> Remember, I split into wings. So I say you do this, you do that. This is the case. You can look at it as the case of an increase in demand when the intercept shifts. This is a parallel shift in demand. What was the result there? You sell more at a higher price, right? I give you two minutes. I want you to get into middle speed mood.
Let's see. Have you done it? I, I didn't interfere with your thinking, so I will be answer myself. So actually, so ideally, let's start thinking about midterm, homework, how you answer the question. This is how you answer the question. This is how you make, you show, wow, we have a solid student here. This is how you show it. Answer. In the midterm, since you don't know the answer, you write the answer, you leave blank space, then you go below, you do explanation. And now you start doing the steps. Sorry, that was still a question. And that's it. Since A2 is bigger than A1, I can write A2 as the sum between A1 and a certain term, delta. A is delta A positive. Now I, I, do, I do the problem optimization for a generic A. If you want, you can write it A1. Oh, not there yet. No, for any A. Okay. You see, I'm writing a lot. You do the same in the midterm. Because you want to tell me what you are doing. Don't just write formula. Write the English explanation of your formulas first. Two reasons. Reason number one, safe. If you, if you write some formula that is wrong because of typos or the like, at least I know what you intended to do. So this allows me to give you, to give you appropriate partial credit. This is the sort of risk management approach. And number two, again, your job is to tell me how much you know. It's not to get the right answer. It's to show me how much you know. And to show knowledge, since the only way in which you are tested in, in an interview is by writing, you have to start from the yeah. understanding that I can only evaluate what's written, not what's not written. If it's an oral, I can say, oh, what do you mean? Explain better. You explain and you okay, you got it. In writing, it's only written. So that's all I have. So your goal is I need to show the prof how much I am learning or how much I have learned. And the prof is slow-minded, so I don't write just equation. I write in English what I'm doing, and that's what I'm doing. Okay. QM is more or less understood is monopoly quantity, otherwise you write it. What the quantity the monopoly produced is solve this marginal revenue for marginal cost. And you write what is the marginal revenue, this one is the marginal cost. And so you are solving it. Okay? Maybe if you want you can add extra steps if needed. Okay, don't, you don't have to have the answer on the top of your head. If you need to make steps in calculations, do them. Okay. And then you say, how do I find the price? I take the quantity and I plug into the demand curve. So here I did the calculation. So now we have this. Whatever you want to I'm using the tangent line. Now you see, the price depends linearly on the intercept. Understand this? It's just two Which means, when I write this, that in general is a tangent line approximation, I get the exact result. I can compute precisely the value of the change in the price when there is that change in the demand. That's the 
because here, here what I'm saying is that A2 minus, minus A1 is equal to that guy. gradient of the graph. Mm -hmm. So the marginal revenue MRI is always double the gradient of the okay. demand. Here I say, maybe if I wanted to be very, 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 very precise with that, I mean that the mark has the written a partial derivative because the price here depends on any C and D. Okay. So I'm doing a partial derivative. Mm -hmm. So you've done, to you've written, this is the answer, and you have given a very comprehensive explanation. Okay. Uh, pro yeah. Problem here, just to check, that B is supposed to cancel out for PM, isn't it? Now that is? Under PM, right, the B is supposed to cancel out? Yes, it's supposed to cancel out. So what did I write it? I don't know. Correct. Very good. And so the derivative is a half. Very, very good. Excellent. Other question? Then if you want to be, say, oh, I have still 20 minutes, I don't know what to do, you can draw the graph. But that, that's not really, I think, not necessary. What do you understand? Oh, it's a scary. Oh. Yeah, one half, right? No. Oh my goodness. I didn't have breakfast. Eh? It's not that I, I drank something illegal. Right? Good. <coughs> Excellent. So this month, this is at the end of chapter <coughs> question. So you see, the, not, nothing really spectacular in this week. Shall we start the price discrimination or you want to do another one? <coughs> so then I'm like the taxi driver. You want to take PIE? You want to take this road? One more. Do we have one particular in mind? <coughs> mm. Oh, I like this one. Yes. Uh. At the cell and task, you also do the monopsony example. Say it again? The monopsony example. Yes. Yeah. Did we go into that today? You want to? I did. Thank you.
bigger point? No, that's it. That's the two holes that go separate. Then you can use the stars. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but I can see. Okay, let me see. Let's, uh, uh, you can start writing the problem. Can you explain why there are nine different Mc, C. Marginal cost is the same and equal to equal to my hypothesis. Constant. Is the same meaning that summer and winter. The question is telling you that what changes between summer and winter is just the demand. Much as cost is constant. Con no, constant. This is a constant. I, I, I call it C. You want to call it gamma? And then I have the description. This description tells me that there will be a faulty number of flights over both in the winter and in the summer. You see it here. You see it here. Yeah. 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 Above the maximum price, the absolute maximum price buyers are going to pay. The marginal revenue will never equal the marginal cost. It will be below. So Q and zero. Okay, so I just added the because it's micro. Macro will try to be as precise as we can. I like macro. Have you seen the graph that says with rigor applicability. So it's macro very rigorous, not applicable. Macro very unrigorous, <coughs> very applicable. Okay, you know, these people want to make fun of economists. But you do a macro with micro foundation. So you will have the rigor and the applicability. Oh, you can study advanced micro, which is very applicable. The people who make fun of micro, they haven't reached that level of knowledge. Revenge. Okay, so, other questions? So, we want to, shall we try this? A monopopsom, monopops, monopolis, and monopsom. How do you call it? Put these two together. That's the best you can hope for. Right? You decide the price at which you hire people, you decide the price at which you sell your product, and no one dictates you anything. <coughs> So this means that the price at which you sell is a function of the quantity. P of Q. And this means says that the wage that you pay is a function of the labor. Okay, and what is the two? Q is a function of L. Is our production function. So how do we write the, the maximization problem for the monop monopoly and monopsony? Same. P of mm. F of L mm. 
Find f of l minus l times w l minus f c six cos. Higher l unit of labor implies produce Q equals F of L unit of output implies charge T equal T of Q equal T of F of L for each unit. Okay. Okay, it was, it was quite something like a question I had in my my phone exam, but multidimensional, not just maximize one choice. I had to solve it properly. It looks like something I, I have to do with my not in the textbook, it's part of the problem and the exam. Okay, so what do we do? P prime F of L times F prime of L times F of L plus P F of L prime of L. This is called chain rule. It's not working. I do because it's charges. I have always been sure when I read charge. <coughs> now what we have? Minus WL minus L W prime of L equals zero. Okay, so you have what? This again is the marginal cost of labor. And this is the marginal revenue product of labor. Margin. How the heck do you plot this? You probably know. Do you know how to plot this? Say this is WL. So 
So if if price wouldn't change, okay. So this is this is f prime of L p p f of L. P prime is zero, right? Yeah. Instead, this one, since P prime, eh, this is less. This is something like this. Oops. How much it pays? W and M and M. This is the price that you charge. M and M. And this will be the efficient. And so what you see, you, you charge more than the efficiency and you pay less than efficiency. Okay. This is the price. This is the price. I'm not sure about the graph right now. Let's keep it in standby. Here is that here I will need numbers now to explore this which I never saw. I will need numbers before I can conclude. Okay. Possible. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this. Okay, but this is what you get for sure. And these are the two effects that we need to understand. Since you have a monopoly, when you change L, you are changing the output, you are changing the price. So when you change L, you are also changing the wage because you have a monopoly. Okay. I think we have. Yes, Giorgio. Uh, the MRPL is 
lower than the F prime L Q becomes P prime F L is minus P B. Correct. P prime is negative. Right. So this would be this is the your demand for label if if you sell your output competitively. So <coughs> as labor changes, so does the marginal product of labor, which typically is decreasing. So the more you employ, the lower is the marginal product. But you don't change the price at which you can sell your own. Now instead, if I employ more workers, I produce more outputs, I need to, to sell them at the lower price. I need to sell at the lower price. So the manager that is product level now becomes this one. This was in case of price of competition. Yeah, so this, this cannot be the price. This cannot be the price. This is the marginal product of labor when price doesn't change. Here I should have, yeah, that's it. Okay, let me rethink. So, need to spend some time thinking and I never do this graph in my life, so I think it's helpful for us to do it. Yes? So if that line, uh, there's the line that's above uh, MRPL, right? Isn't that the demand line? Yes. So why is the equation like F I L? Isn't it just P being a function of F? No, because I, I'm going back to the, the, the graph of the monopsony. The graph of the monopsony was, was drawn by taking P as P, exactly. So, so so the demand so what the if I draw the demand so demand would be demand for output is p over f over okay. So in that case, maybe I write this. So maybe I need to, yes, I need to add stuff. Okay, so if I put this, then the marginal. Am I just asking? Product. Of labor is what? F prime over L. And this is negative, the decrease the law of diminishing marginal product of labor. <coughs> Times P prime over F of L. And this is negative. times f of l, and this is positive, plus p of f of l, which is positive, and that's it. Okay, so what do we get? Okay, everything negative, yes, it's downward sloping. So this is, this is we said it's negative, it's negative. So these two are positive. Positive, positive, okay, now it makes sense. So, what is the point I get? Positive here. Mm -hmm. There is something missing. Mm 
I mean, f prime over l is positive. What am I saying? The derivative of f prime over l is negative. The more the more workers I hire, the bigger the profit output. So this means what we said before, when the margin of revenue product of labor is below, this would be this is what we called before the demand for labor, right? Is below. Whatever and whereas our demand was written as P F over L. Again, I need to think a little bit more because there are three things that I'm trying to put in a graph. So if I cannot give an answer, I'll let us spend the other 20 minutes. Okay, so today is what? Tuesday. If you want, you can think. I'll think about it. How to, if I can, if I can put everything in. But this is in terms of the how to write the problem. This, this is an issue. This is how you write it, and this is how you solve it. Okay. So this is gonna give you L. Once you have L, you have F of L. So you have the price. You have F of L. And once you have L, you have the wage. Okay. Okay, sort of. Let's start price discrimination. Now, let Because I don't want to spend the other half an hour. This, this is something I, I, I can think of at home without, without delaying the speed. But yes, tell me. Okay, sorry, it's just a quick one. Like, can you go to the graph at the bottom? At the graph, I'm not, I'm not convinced about that. <coughs> oh. I'm convinced that's why. Okay, because I'm not asking something about the graph. No, okay. I want to, this is where I'm stuck. I want to try to put everything in one graph. I don't think this is the right thing. Because I wanted to ask you, like, isn't if it, if the output is competitive, yes. Because the change in L doesn't change the price. So that would be the monopsis. But we have a monopolis monopsis. So when you change L, you also change P. That's why you have something below. Because by changing L, I produce more, I sell lower. This is so this this comparison is correct. What I'm not sure about is what this does. What is this? How, how okay, how do I find, so. This is, this gives you the label you have here, and therefore this gives you the price. Yeah. I want to find the, and this cannot be the price, because the price is P over four. That's why this cannot be the case. Just produce an efficient outcome of the mix. Okay, so I want to see if I can put that in one graph. Maybe I cannot. Just one by one zero, then they should write a view on one price. Price discrimination. Is that what I mean? They don't want to be covered under the price discrimination. The price they charge for your goods, not the MRPL. Second degree. Feeding. I'm charging P of F of L. Okay. 
L is given. Okay. F over L tells me how many units I could use. P over L tells me the price. So uh, I should find a way to yeah. draw P over F of L here. Once I draw P over F of L, I have it. So now you know what to do in the shower, eh? Right. I thought that line is the heat. You can draw line. <laughs> you find the right man. Okay, the thing is, right? The is the moment of the 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 Taxing on, on the intellect, right? If you remember stuff. Okay. Now, still the monopolist okay. can do what the monopolist wants. It's not written in the stone that the monopolist should sell units at one price. Okay. There are instances where there are no alternatives. You have to sell units at one price. There are instances where you can sell, you can charge different group of people, different prices for different goods. Or, or you can minimally change the goods you are selling in order to exploit the fact that there are different group of people who are willing to pay different prices. For this good, this is called version. Or you can do even better. Part of version is called damage goods. You spend more, marginally more, to make an item less successful. So that now we have two things we can sell at different prices. So these are all tricks that are used with one goal. To try to charge, to get as close as possible to what consumers are willing to pay. And the benefits can be, can be going into, of course, this makes the profits of the monopoly bigger, but the benefits can also be distributed to buyers because by price discriminating, you can even expand the output that a, a single price monopoly would normally sell. So you would definitely get closer to the efficient production. Although this comes at the expense of the consumer surplus, because they're doing all of this to get, since I'm trying to price my 